Hey there, I'm going to walk you through a very quick demo of how to create your own Xcode playground. So maybe you're taking developments with fundamentals or maybe you're teaching it and you're using some of the labs and you're like, oh, I'd love to develop some of those on my own for my students. How on earth do I do that? Uh, so we've, we've been over how to create a playground book. And in fact, we have a series about that uh, for the Swift Student Challenge for WWDC. So that might be interesting. That's how to get it onto a... Uh, uh, an iPad or into the Playgrounds app on your Mac or iPad. Uh, but let's look at how we would do it in, in Xcode. So for an Xcode Playground, it's, it's something a little bit different. Um, we can go to Xcode and choose File, New, Playground. It's going to pop open a little dialog for us to pick a, a template for it. We're just going to start with a blank one. So we'll hit Next. We'll call it My Playground and save it on the desktop for now. And we have our, our usual starting point. Now, if you don't have, I'm using Xcode 12. If you don't have the Project Navigator highlighted over here, you can tap this button and it'll show and hide the Project Navigator where we can see the actual source files that we're gonna be using in here. So imagine this is what I want to start off with here. I have my greeting variable that has a value of Hello Playground. Not a lot of code going on here, but I want to build a bit of a progression. So what I'm going to do is add another playground page because I'm going to teach my students about enumerations. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom and hit the plus button and choose new playground page. And what that's going to do is that's going to move a couple files around inside my project navigator here. So I'll have an untitled page two, which is my new one. You can see it's got some comments here. I import foundation, I'm also doing the same greeting. I also have another untitled page that is my original page that was there. I also have the sources folder and a resources folder. We're not gonna focus on that for this particular tutorial. So if I go back to untitled page two, which I just created, I can view it like I was viewing the labs that come with develop and Swift fundamentals by going up to editor and choosing to show the rendered markup. So it's going to take these comments here that are two slashes followed by a colon and it's going to render them. So let's take a look and see what, what happens then. So you can see now I have a link called previous and one called next. So if I hit next, it'll go to the next page. That's a special link. Same thing with previous. Now it won't go anywhere because there is no previous page. This is the one at the top of my files in the project navigator. So I'm going to go back to raw markup. And we can see these at symbols with next and at previous. Now we're going to turn this into an enumerations page. So we're going to we'll get rid of this stuff. We can stop importing foundation. We're just going to create our own enumeration called sign. And we'll use our, our old example of uh, rock, paper, scissors. So the signs will be rock, paper, scissors. All right, cool. So that's our enumeration. Maybe we'll even create a constant there called sign. We'll give it a type sign and we'll use dot rock. Great. So now I don't have a, a previous link, but that's fine. Uh, we're actually going to rename this page so I can just tap on it once and we'll title it enumerations because that's what I want to focus on in this particular page. That's what I'm, I'm teaching in this page. Now, how do I get from untitled page though, where maybe I introduce people to playgrounds and, and how it works. In fact, I'll drag that up here. So that's my first page. How do I get from my untitled page to enumerations? Now I could use the next keyword that, that we saw before, um, but I'm actually going to use a, what's called a named link. So I'm going to use the slash slash and a colon. I'm going to use square brackets here and I'm just going to call it enums because maybe I want a shortened link title. And then for my actual link, I'm going to use parentheses. Now I could make this a link off to maybe docs.swift.org if I wanted to have extra information about how to format this or more information about enumerations. Uh, but this is actually going to be linked to a named page within my playground. So I can actually just type in enumerations 
And that should be a link off to my new enumerations page. Now, if I, I spell it wrong, I can test this out by going to editor, show rendered markup. It looks like a link, but when I tap on it, it won't go anywhere. So let's go back to show raw markup. We'll make sure we call it enumerations. We'll show rendered markup. Now, if I tap on it, we should jump to our enumerations page. And now my previous link should be working. And now my next link doesn't work because I don't have a page following that just yet. So that's how to start writing my rendered markup so that I can provide a bit of instructions. And in fact, that's some of the nice things about the uh, material that come with developments with fundamentals it, is it gives us some explanation about what's, what's going on and how do we, uh, what's our goal on this page. So the way you would do that is very similar to this. I'm going to use a multi-line comment because maybe I want to tell a much bigger story about what we're doing here. So I use the slash star to start a multi-line comment. And after the star, I'm going to use a colon. And that's going to be my, it's going to be shown as a, a multi-line comment that my students can't edit unless they show the raw markup. So we'll just leave a little note. So that looks fine. We're still in raw markup mode. If we hit editor and go to show rendered markup, we can see that now we have a, a bit of instruction about what, what it is we intend to do with this page. And I can still write a bunch of code down here and I can create as much extra material that I want to have the students work with or, or work with myself. Now, one other note, if I wanted to have a link back to a page that has a space in it, I, want, I could use the percent encoding for spaces. So if I wanted to create a link here, go back to show raw markup, I'm going to create a link back to my untitled page. I could use at previous, or maybe I've built a huge structure out and I want to actually just name it so that I can jump there and I don't have to worry about where it shows up in the hierarchy. I'm going to do slash slash. We're going to call our, that's going to be the title of our link because it's inside the square brackets. And then to jump to a, a named page, again, we type in the name, name of it, titled page. If we show the rendered markup, We can see that we have an issue here. It hasn't rendered for us. So let's, let's debug this a little bit. We'll go back to, to raw markup. So we can see it kind of looks the same. Well, it's that space that's throwing things off. So if we do percent 20 to represent our space, and then we show the rendered markup, we look much better. So that space is throwing things off. So in our URL, we have to make sure that it's a consecutive series of characters with no spaces in between. So anywhere you have a space, you would just use percent %20 instead of the space. Because now I can tap on untitled page and I'll jump back to my original. So that's how you can start to build out your own Xcode Playground pages, which is really useful, especially if you're teaching one of the lessons from Develop and Swift. Now they, there are a bunch already pre-written for you, that this could be useful if you're following a slightly different path than they follow in the book, or if you just want to generate some extra material. There is an excellent resource online. We have, of course, this writing prose for a playground page that you can go visit. It tells you all about these comments that will get rendered in a really nice font. It won't be editable. And we can also localize these as well. And you should also check out the markup formatting reference. That'll show you how to insert links, both to external links and to ones within your playground. It'll talk about comments, how you can format certain spans of, of your code in your page. It is really powerful. And in fact, if we go look at the inserting links, we have all the reference that tells us how to create different links 
I always have to come back to this because I always forget, is it square brackets first or parentheses first? And which one is which? Which one's the link? Which one's the link text? And we can see our special references like our next and our previous page. And then our, our named page rules. So I highly recommend checking out both those links. The markup formatting references is, is, is really useful to have bookmarked and keep checking out. And that'll get you on your way to creating your own Xcode playground that can be really rich and can lead your students or anybody through the code that you want to have them work through. All right, see you next time.